Next on Worcester News Tonight, the Wings of Freedom Tour has touched down in Worcester, showcasing rare World War II aircrafts. Plus, thousands of people are expected to be on the UMass Medical School campus this weekend for the 19th annual UMass Cancer Walk and Run. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. World War II aircrafts flew into the Worcester Regional Airport Friday afternoon and are on display as part of the Wings of Freedom Tour. The nationwide tour is put on by the Callings Foundation, a nonprofit educational foundation devoted to organizing living history events. The tour features pl planes yeah. like the B-17, B-25, and the last fully restored B-24 flying in the world. It's a tribute to all those who have served during World War II, including the flight crews who flew them, maintained them, and built them. Despite losing his sight, one veteran we spoke with still makes a point of coming to the show each year. He says it's an emotional trip down memory lane. Most of them in outhouse mounts. No, no protection, only your, your machine guns. And uh, there's no protection against the, air, uh, the anti-aircraft fire. Mm -hmm. that it explodes in front of the aircraft and we fly through it. The Callings Foundation encourages veterans like Walt to join and share their experiences and stories with the public. The air show will be at the Worcester Regional Airport today through Sunday. After two difficult growing seasons, farmers are celebrating a surplus of a fall favorite. The first day of fall marks the start of a busy time for apple orchards. And one local farm says they're looking forward to this season. Our Rosalind Flaherty has the story. It's the busiest time of year for Clearview Farm in Sterling. The farm relies on the fall season. In the middle of the summer, we don't seem to have the crowds because everybody's on vacation. It's a big effort in the fall. More than 20 acres of apples and pumpkins are ready to be picked. Owner Rick Malone says the apples are much bigger this year due to a wet spring and summer. We've got a lot of apples, a lot of different varieties that didn't, you know, uh, happen last year. So we've got a, a full crop. Malone says two years ago a hailstorm killed their crop. And last year apples were falling off the trees due to the drought. The trees were stressed and they just couldn't, you know, it's like anything. If you're feeling lousy, you know, you just can't carry a big bundle, and that's what happened to the, the apple trees. The farm makes homemade apple cider. Malone says they produce about 300 gallons a week. They also make homemade baked goods like pies with the help of this machine. It's usually one bushel of apples to, to produce this. Um, we go through an awful lot of them. We, can't, we have a hard time keeping up with them this time of year. The farm harvests about 10,000 bushels of apples a season, and Malone says there are plenty for people to go home with. Once the weather gets cool and, and blustery, people, you know, know that it's apple season and that's when they come out. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Thousands of people are expected to be on the UMass Medical School campus this weekend for the 19th annual UMass Cancer Walk and Run. The funds raised support cancer research, clinical trials, and patient care at the UMass so Cancer definitely. Center. For survivors like Christine Cernick, the event really hits home. She's a breast cancer survivor and says the event brings many people together to do something positive, adding it takes a village in order to successfully fight this disease. Um, that it is truly uh, an, a place where you don't feel alone and where you feel like it's a shared journey. The walk and run will be held at the UMass Medical School campus this weekend with the runner registration kicking things off at 7 o'clock a.m. This year's goal is to raise $475,000. Since its inception, they've raised nearly $10 million. Authorities say a man accused of killing three family members and a caretaker in Groton told police officers he, quote, freed them. Records released by the police today say Orion Kraus told officers he killed his mother, grandparents, and a caretaker with a baseball bat. The documents say Kraus began singing after telling the officers about the incident. The records also say Kraus told a nurse during a medical evaluation he uses heroin. The 22-year-old has pled not guilty and is being held without bail at a mental health facility for a competency evaluation. Worcester police respond to a one-car crash on Chandler Street Friday. Witnesses say a car was speeding down the road when the driver crashed into a light pole. Debris could be seen across the road. It's unclear what caused the car to crash, but one man who saw the whole thing tells us the driver and passenger were taken away by ambulance. We saw the pole and the, and the trash can just go flying everywhere, and the car stopped over there. Uh, there was a guy that jumped out of the way. 
because he almost got taken out as uh, I ran over to try to help getting them out of there, out of the car. Um, both females were strapped in. There was, uh, you can see damage to the front of the vehicle. There was a lot of people that just jumped out to pull them out of the car. No word yet on whether the driver is facing any charges. A day after hearing the results of the study of Aaron Hernandez's brain, one local professor says he may have the key to preventing repeated sports-related head trauma. Our Brittany Schaefer spoke with him today and has the story. It was the most severe case they had ever seen for someone of Aaron's age. Uh, I'm very surprised, yeah, it's given the young age. It's a sad story. A study of Aaron Hernandez's brain comes back with a diagnosis of stage 3 CTE. The disease caused by repeated head trauma is being found more and more in football players. Worcester Polytechnic Institute professor Song Bai Ji is working on new technology to prevent sports-related injuries. I think this is a very meaningful research. It really makes some difference in, in people's lives. G is using neuroimaging and computer modeling to create better ways to quickly diagnose concussions in contact sports. On the field, and when someone's head is hit, then we can quickly retrieve those strain maps. And over time, you know, hopefully over time, we can accumulate all those strain maps, combine them to see whether we can have a better chance of detecting injury. I was shocked. I, I did not think that uh, he could be as functional as he was with the amount of damage that they said that he had. There's absolutely uh, a need for more medical research. In G's research, he says the white matter deep within the brain is more vulnerable and could be a better indicator of an injury. It's a different research um, perspective, I say. Instead of allowing him or her continue to play, we just remove him or her off the field for some recovery. Hopefully that could uh, uh, reduce or even eliminate the CT problem for these athletes. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation has plans to build a new highway headquarters here in Worcester. Crews were on scene Friday clearing out space on Plantation Parkway, where the facility will be built. It's expected to cost around $35 million. CTA Construction of Waltham is managing the development. It's expected to be completed sometime next year. Newton mayor and gubernatorial candidate Seti Warren wants to see Amazon's new headquarters in Worcester. Warren says Worcester is the best location for the e-commerce giant's second campus. Warren says an Amazon move to Central Mass should be combined with a plan for a high-speed rail to link both ends of the state, and Amazon should help pay. Worcester Chamber of Commerce President Tim Murray says the city is working on a bid proposal. The Retailers Association of Massachusetts is on a mission to reduce the sales tax to 5%, where it was for decades before 2009. Any decrease would have consequences for state programs. Cassie Arsenal has the story and the numbers. Cream cheese frosting. And Sugar is Lynn Donnelly's livelihood. And it has been for the last 14 years at the Bittersweet Bake Shop. And on to the next recipe. She depends on giving her customers competitive prices so they keep walking up to her counter. When people are tight on money, they're counting pennies everywhere and desserts are luxury. And the 6.25% Massachusetts sales tax is something that isn't easily hidden, even in her delicious treats. A lot of times people say, well, I thought it was 375. How come it's this? And I'm like, well, it's tax. The Retailers Association of Massachusetts is hoping to change the game for Lynn and everyone across the Commonwealth. Lower the sales tax from the current rate of 6.25% back to 5% where it was for decades. Not only a decrease in sales tax, but a mandatory annual sales tax holiday in August. Keep our uh, consumer spending here local rather than online or across the border. But a decrease in sales tax revenue means cuts in state funding. The states need revenue. It's got to come from somewhere. The Department of Revenue estimates a 5% sales tax could result in massive revenue losses. For more than $360 million in 2018, progressing to a billion dollars plus in 2021. And the DOR says those losses would have a major impact on funding for the MBTA, the School Building Authority, and the state's general fund. Donnelly, like many, is conflicted about a potential sales tax cut. The taxes go places, and mm -hmm. that's necessary. This is just the first step in a very long process to try to get this on the 2018 ballot. Their next step, get about 65,000 verified signatures by December 6. In Boston, Cassie Arsenal, Worcester News Tonight.